All right, so in this example, ladies and gentlemen, I have negative 2x um, plus x. Again, you don't have to do this, but I think sometimes it's helpful. I like to write in what the parent, graph, what the parent function is. That sometimes helps me remember or identify, am I adding or subtracting or multiplying something inside the function or outside the function? If it's inside, it's going to be under the radical, right? Yes? OK. So I can see there's nothing here. Now I have to go inside the function. I see from left to right, I see I'm multiplying by a negative. So therefore, that's going to tell me anytime you're multiplying inside the function, I'm going to have a reflection of the y-axis. Answer number one. Then I move to the next value, 2. Again, that's multiplying by my function. 2, absolute value is greater than 1. That's a horizontal compression. So I write horizontal compress. And technically, you should tell me the factor of 2 because it's the absolute value. You're finding the, it's the absolute value of that C. So it's a horizontal compressed factor of 2. And then you can see we have one last one, which is a plus 1. But a lot of times, to end the contain of the radical, we just put a little line there. So therefore, you can see I am not adding 1 under my radical, right? So we can say that is going to um, vertical shift one unit up. Or you could say vertical shift positive one, and I'd be OK with that. But does everybody see my answers to that? The factor of 2, because that's what I'm multiplying it by. And remember, it's absolute value of c. So what are you multiplying by your function? Remember, c is what you're multiplying by your function. What are you multiplying by? Negative 2. But it's the absolute value of negative 2. Absolute value, remember, is the absolute positive distance of that. So absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. All right, so now let's get to the graphing portion. And this is why it's important to know what the graph looks like. Because if you're going to look at what the graph looks like, we need to remember what square root graph looks like, just the parent graph. It doesn't need to be perfect. But I have this written up there on the board. Oh, graph, parent functions, right over there. It looks something like this, right? Something like that. It doesn't even need to be perfect. Now let's apply each transformation individually. I'm going to reflect the y-axis. Here's the y-axis. So my graph looks something like this now. It's, I'll deal with the horizontal compression last. And I have to vertically shift up one. So if originally it was at 0, now it's up one. So I'll say the graph is going to look something like that. Just a little FYI, I am not going to mark you down and say your horizontal compression was not good enough. Okay? It's easy for me to identify that you shifted the graph up one. It's easy for me to identify if you reflected the y-axis. If you're applying a correct vertical um, compression or stretch or horizontal compression or stretch, as long as you've noted it in here for me, I'm not going to say that you didn't do it in your graph. But just be cognizant uh, of it a little bit. And horizontal compression is basically mean you're kind of squishing it right, a little bit. So that's why I kind of have a little bit of a sharper curve compared to my parent graph. But again, don't worry about it as far as it's got you. You're not going to be marked down for that. Um, the next thing we need, last thing we need to do is C, which is the domain and range. Domain, we look at this red graph. How far to the left is my graph going? negative infinity. How far to the right is it going? Zero, but zero is included. My range. My range is how low is my graph going, which is one, which is included. And then it's going all the way up to infinity. OK? Three-part question. Be a very, very good one to give on a quiz. 